Hello world and welcome to a brand new series where today we're going to be covering the mod Extreme Reactors. Today we're going to be covering all the basics of getting your first reactor and the basic mechanics around reactors. So let's jump straight into it. Extreme Reactors has a fair few new ingredients and items, some that can spawn in the world, some that you have to make. To start off with, the very first thing we're going to be getting is Yellowite Ore. Yellowite Ore will spawn in the overworld in pretty much every single biome underground, and this is essentially going to be your fuel for every type of reactor you have. Now, if you are playing a mod pack that does have Uranium, Uranium sometimes can be switched out with Yellowite, but if you're playing with the purely Extreme Reactors and that's it, Yellowite is going to what you're going to be needing. I have Mechanism installed, so Mechanism in Uranium is actually something I am allowed to use with the reactors. But with this yellow right ore, all you have to do is smelt it simple inside of the furnace here, and then this will turn into your yellow yellowium ingots. As well as that, we have a couple of other things which we don't really know how to use yet, one of which is Benetoit ore. When you break this, it will give you the Benetoit straight away, nothing needed. This is just simply found in the nether. And then we have Angel Sight ore, which is the same when you break, you'll get this Angel Sight, and this is found in the end. The only other type of ingredient we're going to need are these graphite bars. The graphite bars are made by smelting either coal or charcoal inside of a furnace, um, and then you will get these graphite bars. But how about we get into making our first reactor here? We're going to need a, a couple of different things, as there are many intricate parts to a reactor. Some are optional, some are not. The first tier we're going to be getting is actually the basic tier, and this can go up to a maximum of a 5x5 reactor, which we have over there. First thing we're going to need are these reactor casings. These are made with four graphite bars, four iron ingots, and some sand. And you will get only one of these per craft, and you will need a fair few of these depending on what size you are actually creating your reactor. An optional thing you can get is actually reactor glass made with one reactor casing and two pieces of glass. And this is just basically a way of seeing inside of your reactor. Um, the frame itself must be the casing, but the sides here, you can have glass to actually see what's going on inside if you so wish, but it's completely optional. Something that's not optional though is the reactor controller, the basic tier. This is made with two yellowium ingots, a diamond, a piece of redstone, a redstone comparator, and four of these reactor casings. And you only get one of these per craft, but you only need one of these per reactor. You're going to need some reactor control rods. This is going to be the way of actually injecting fuel into your reactor. And these are made with a piston, a piece of redstone, two iron ingots, a graphite bar, and four reactor casings. And you will get one of these per craft. And you'll need one of these per rod stack that you actually create inside your reactor. But we'll cover more of that in a moment. You also need the fuel rods themselves. This is the basic tier again. This is going to require four iron ingots, the yellowium ingot, two graphite bars, and two pieces of glass. You'll get one of these per craft, and depending on the size, you're going to need a fair few of these. Now, two more things we're going to need. The first one is the reactor solid access port. This is using two iron ingots, a chest, a piston, hopper, and four of these reactor casings. Now, this has two different modes. It has an import and an export, but we'll cover that shortly. And then we have the Reactive Forge Energy Power Tap. Now, this is the active variant. There is also a passive variant, and we'll cover that shortly. But for the active variant, which is something I recommend, requires the reactor casings, one redstone dust in the center, and then four redstone blocks on the outside. So now let's cover our very first reactor here. The smallest you can make it, and the first here you're probably going to make, is the 3x3x3 three by three by three reactor. Now, as you can see, all the frame here is going to be this reactor casing. You can have the sides be the glasses you see here. We have the reactor rod in the very center. And on the top, we have the control rod. This is what has to be on top of every fuel rod stack. And I'll cover what that means in a second. We need to have our solid access port on one side. You can only have one. But if you want to get the waste out of here, then you will need two. Um, but if you just want to power it, then don't worry. You can only use one to make it work. And then you'll need your Forge Energy Power Tap. We have the active type on here. I'm going to explain the difference between the active and power type very shortly. Uh, besides that, we have got some mechanism cables and power storage here. This is going to be basically your way of getting the power out of this. Extreme Reactors doesn't have any sort of pipes or anything like that. You will need to use other types of mods. But the reactor will use the Forge Energy or RF system uh, for it to actually work. Uh, you can actually configure this to use other types of power, but that is up to the mod pack's discretion, uh, the author's discretion, and they will have to configure what type of power can come out of these reactors. By default, it's using the Forge Energy system. Forge Energy is the same as RF. They are compatible. 
But anyway, once this has formed, you'll see that the, you have these lines around the edge. That will means that your uh, reactor has formed. If I break this now, you'll see that it's disappeared. This is an incomplete block. If you were to have um, some blocks in the wrong places as well, if something hasn't been created right, say if I place this here and then I try and open the controller, we'll get this error message. It will tell you the coordinates. And if you start mousing over where you think it could be, when you find the error, it will give you this highlighted block here. And it, that's where we know that we need to make this to be a frame. And now we have a working reactor. All of these different sides, they have their own sort of GUIs, so we'll cover them shortly. But to start off with, we want the controller um, basic. Um, so if we right click on the controller, we have our interface here. We'll see a couple of different things. We'll see our fuel status. This is how much fuel is going to be inside the reactor. Uh, it also gives you a couple of different things, how much waste is being created, because waste also goes into our fuel rod section tells you how many fuel rods we have we obviously only have one stack so we have one fuel rod and then it tells us the total amount of fuel that is in there which is at 3500 millibuckets we have the core heats this is how hot the fuel rod is essentially going to be we have the casing heat the casing heat is essentially what is going to be generating the power so the best thing to do is to try and get all the, as much as your core heat into your casing heat as possible that will give you the most amount of power then we have an internal power buffer, which is how much energy you can store. With this size generator or reactor, we can generate 270,000 um, Fe. A couple of other things in here, we have our energy output. This is how much energy we are creating per tick. We have how much the core heat is here, just as a quick glance. Uh, we have our burn rate, so this is how fast we are actually burning up our fuel. And then we have our fuel, reacti uh, our fuel reactivity. So the higher the radiation, the less um fuel burn up we have so we want to keep this high and keep this low and that's all the inside besides that we have on off we have void reactants so this is your waste so if your waste starts building up in here you don't want to take it out you can just completely void it and you can just put more fuel into here uh, as well as that we have ejection mode this is going to be taking your waste out you can either have it as automatic or manual i'm going to keep it on automatic however we don't have an export um port at the moment we don't have an export access port like this yet um so we won't actually end up exporting anything and then we have scram if the, all hell breaks loose and something bad's going to happen then you can scram this will automatically shut this down as quickly as possible but this can actually break things so that, before we turn it on let's go over the couple of other things on the top here we have our reactor control rod if we right click on this we can have a do two different things you can name this by default this name will be completely blank it will not be named uh, i've just named it main rod because it's the only one we have in here um, from here you can change a couple of things we have your percentage of insertion this is going to be how much of your fuel is going to be inserted into your uh, fuel rod now you by default this is actually going to be all the way down to zero percent i believe now you can change these by using these buttons if you hold control you do it by 10 if you hold it by shift it does the whole thing i'm going to change it here now if you have a reactor that has more rods say our bigger size over here when you right click on this you can obviously set each one with an individual name and you can change just this one specific rod or you can change every rod to be the percentage you want by default it is on uh zero percent and for whatever reason when you have it on 100 percent that then uh the the fuel stops sort of inserting so i feel like it's a little bit backwards but i could be wrong we're going to keep this on zero though and keep it on change. Then we have our solid reactor access port here. We have a couple of different things. This is where we actually put our urane, uranium ingots or your yellowium ingots. We're using yellowium. God, that is a tongue twister. Here you can also do a couple of different things. We are on inlet mode, which means the fuel is going to be inserted. We can also change this port to outlet mode. As you can see, it changes this to green. And the outlet mode is how you're going to get your waste out of the system. But you can also get the fuel out of the system. So at the moment, inside of here, if we go around the back, we can see that it, the fuel rod is filled up. And inside of here, it is filled. If we have this in outlet mode, we can actually eject the fuel. I don't know why it's not working, but this should work. So I've added a second one onto here. And when I'm on here and I say eject fuel, it ejects out of the back here. I don't know why but uh yeah apparently you need two different ports very confused here inlet mode outlet mode eject it's not working but we put a second one in here and we do eject it ejects it from here not quite sure how this works or why it's working like that but there you go use an export one to actually take the stuff out we're going to leave this in inlet mode because we want to have our fuel go in there so we'll keep this maxed out uh and then you have eject waste the waste will come out of here but that's going to be everything now so how about we just simply turn this on and we'll see that power just starts generating here we'll have our heat it takes a bit of time for it to heat up uh but obviously the better the reaction um 
the less fuel that's going to heat up here but as you can see we have a relatively low internal heat we have 767 or 68 core heat and our casing heat is 611 this is giving us roughly 184,000 fe per tick or 184 fe per tick here now this is where we are going to come to our active forge energy chat now there are two different types there is the active type and there is the passive type now i've actually put the passive type over here because i was going to show it off later but i think it's better to show it off now the passive is made with the inverse way of the active. So the active required redstone blocks on the outside and redstone dust in the middle. The passive is the other way around, so it's cheaper. Now, the difference between the active and the passive is the passive will actually do nothing itself. So if I break this here, we can break it and turn it and re replace it, and this will automatically uh, change. It will be off, but that's fine. When we have passive, what we can see is that the internal buffer is actually starting to fill up and no power is coming out. That is because the passive forge energy tap doesn't do anything itself, but it allows us to take in or out energy. So what we are going to need here, we are using mechanism. The mechanism pipes have the ability to pull um, energy out of blocks. So if I set this here to pull, we can see that it's now pulling the energy out. The difference is, is that if I have the active, the active is going to always try and push and pull energy out of it regardless. So with nothing connected, obviously it will store its internal power if I turn this back on. But if I now put in our, our um, pipe here, without having to set the configuration, we can see that power is automatically being piped out. So I recommend using the active. It requires less thinking, less configuration, uh, but it is slightly more expensive. So that's how the active works. So besides that now, this is your most basic reactor. I know it can be a little bit confusing with all the information I've just thrown at you, but this is essentially working. Now, there are ways of improving this, mostly by size, but uh, for right now, this is it. Now, there are two different types of reactors when it comes to this mod. There is the passive type and the active type. Very similar to um, the active and passive energy forge tap, the reactor as a whole can be worked in two different ways. The passive way is um, without cooling, basically. It kind of cools itself. Um, and then the active reactor is by automatically putting in a some sort of coolant to cool the uh, fuel rod to push the heat out to the uh, reactor. For right now, we're only be covering act, uh, passive reactors today. As to get to use active reactors, you need to have the next tier of reactors, and that is the reinforced reactors. We're not going to be covering reinforced stuff today. So the next best way to actually upgrade your reactor is by size, which we have here. So this is the biggest size you can do with the basic tier of casings and this is the five by five now you can build this in any way you want inside of here we can see that we actually have four of our reactor rods now you can have these fuel rods in many different configurations and we'll cover them shortly but for right now we have just got four we can put more in here we can put less in here if we wanted to we could just have one fuel rod stack in the center and that would be perfectly fine uh, but we have four in here. Now, bearing in mind, because we have four in here, we're going to use a lot more power. I think it takes about, uh, it was about two and a half stacks of yellorium to actually fill everything up. Uh, as you can see, we have a little bit more left over in here. Now, I've got this already running. As you can see, it's already on. It's been running for a little while now. And this is now generating 2,529 FE per tick. So that's a massive difference between the um, 170 FE per tick here. An incredible amount. Now, all that we've changed is basically made a bigger size and added more yellorium. As well as that, I have added a uh, access port here, which you can see it is on cyanide. Um, it's on export mode, and in here I have automate automatic mode for the waste ejection. So this is just going to fill up in here, and we've generated nine or uh, six cyanide ingots. Now, right now, cyanide ingots aren't going to be used for anything in this tutorial. However, these are going to be used for more advanced machines later, so hold on to these. These are very important and are going to be very good at using, um, at making other machines, as well as refining this to make better power sources later or better fuels for later than uh, Yellorium. Besides that, we've got everything the same here. We've got our active um, Forge Energy Power Tap on the side here. And uh, that is about it. Now, again, this still isn't the best basic tier of reactor we can get. However, before we carry on to the next ones, I do just want to show off the ways you can actually turn this to a uh, export mode. Obviously, we have gone inside here to show between inlet and outlet, but there is also a wrench um, for this mod, which just requires four iron ingots like this. 
a green die in any two pieces of colored wool and when you what you can do with this is actually right click on your ports here to change it between modes um so that's something there uh we're gonna leave this as is so how about we go over to our other two types of uh reactors over here here we've got two different setups they are at two different layouts this reactor here is the exact same layout we have here except there is one difference and you can probably see inside we have water on all the points inside of here i'm just going to break this so we can actually see uh let's do that there on the inside we just simply have water and this is going to be a way of passively cooling down our rods it doesn't it's not going to use up any of this water it's just going to be in here to passively cool it now when we have this on we can see that once it heats up because i broke those blocks it stops because I have this heating up now, this is actually going to generate slightly more power efficient um, than the previous type, simply because we've got water in it. So this is now 2,648, and this one over here was 2,518. So as you can see, it's a, it's a significant increase, about 100 or so. Just over 100, about 150 for simply adding water in here. Now this is probably one of your best efficient types, um, because it's not gen it's not burning up too much fuel as you can see it's 0 0.101 millibuckets where this one over here is uh, actually just under that but we have the cooling going so it's working a lot more power we're getting a lot more power for 0 0.002 millibuckets so I think it's definitely worth it um, besides that you can also do something like this now I don't recommend doing something like this um, if I turn this on we'll get it to start charging up here we actually have nine fuel rods every single one is being used and there's no cooling now something to mention is that in extreme reactors i do not believe any of these reactors can actually blow up however it's all about efficiency with your yellorium as you can see here this is burning up a lot of power we are generating more power nearly double 4400 but we are going through so much yellorium now uh, we also have a better fuel reactivity because of because of the cooling, but this is generating so much wastage. It's generating so much wastage. Now there is a time where I would recommend you do do this, and it's not going to be for the power. Although you could use the power, it's purely to actually get your wastage to get wastage quickly because cyanide is going to be used a lot later. Um, well, not a lot later, relatively soon actually to upgrade to the next sort of tiers. Um, so this is good to just purely get loads of cyanide, but not good for long-term use of your base i would recommend something more like this to power your base and something like this to generate uh, a lot of cyanide but you won't need to generate loads of cyanide like we're using this until you're a little bit later on in this mod now there is one more thing i would like to show off today in this tutorial and that is the reactor redstone port this is going to be a way of actually controlling your reactor in various different ways this is made with a piece of gold a redstone comparator a redstone repeater two pieces of iron and your reactor casings and this is going to generate the basic redstone pores. Now, this is the only type of optional thing that you can get uh, for your basic tier of reactor. There are many other types of optional things we can put on a reactor, but they're all going to be for your reinforced tier. And that is not going to be covered until the next episode. So for now, this is the only type of optional thing you can actually have on here. And there are a couple of different things. You are going to need a minimum of two of these for it to really do anything. You can have one in theory, but I recommend two because one is going to be sort of reading the internals of your reactor and the other one is going to be what you want your reactor to do once it's read that. Um, so we've got here these linked one into the other. So inside here we have got ourselves a slightly different... Um, layout in here this is just another way that you could do the reactor here we've got six ports and the three are um cooled in the center with water here and if i turn this on here this is going to be generating a decent amount of power as well as you can see we've got one extra fuel rod this is at 3.5 is it going to go to six yeah 3.6 and this is n almost half the burn rate of having nine rods so with three less rods you can generate a lot less power and as you can see it's just kicked in the redstone's kicked in and it has turned off now, why is this turned off? Now, around the side here, we have got this basic port here. Uh, inside, on the top, we have our three inputs of redstone signals, and on the outside, we have our three outputs of reactor signals. What we are using here is the energy stored output, and we have this. We can set this in a couple of different ways. We can set this to activate uh, when it's below a certain threshold, 
uh, activate a redstone signal when it's between a threshold and send a redstone signal when it's above a threshold. So we have this on a um, below, and we're going to save this here. And so when it, this drop, when this reactor drops below 80% internal buffer here, what's going to happen? It's going to send a redstone signal. Now, when it sends the redstone signal, it's going to go to this other port. And we have this set to the on-off setting. What this does is that when a redstone signal is brought into it, it's going to basically toggle on or off. You can also set this to pulse mode, so every time it receives a pulse of redstone signal, it's just going to switch. But I have this to... Um, uh, basically set so we'll have that saved so on the side here what i'm going to do is actually feed this power out of here so we'll take this feed out and it will drain all of that instantly as you can see it's already turned on because the internal buffer has dropped below 80 percent so now the machine has turned on again it's a good fail safe way of just not wasting your yellorium because even if this is um turned i've got a full buffer it will still burn all your fuel so this is something i would recommend you do simply just to not waste power now obviously we have a lot of uh, storage over here using these ultimate cubes but basically we would know that if for whatever reason all of these cubes drained like we were using a lot of power in our base for whatever system maybe an ae2 system and it's using loads of power or we're using a mechanism superconductor and making antimatter and all that uh, if we lost all of this power um, then obviously this would turn on when need be, but if we don't have the power in the system and we're not using all that power, there's no point in having this on. That's the best way. There are other things you can do though. Um, inside of here, we have got haste casing heat. So if your casing gets to a certain amount of temperature, maybe you don't want it to get too hot or you want it to not get too cool. Um, so you want it to basically turn on when the cooling gets to a certain amount. It's a little bit of min-maxing, but you can do all of these things. Then you can control the redstone signal. We have got your core heat as well. We have got your fuel richness. Um, so this is your richness, I believe, is... I'm trying to figure out what fuel richness is, and I've got, when it's 50% fuel rich, emit a redstone signal. If I take this out, if I take all the fuel out, this will actually turn off. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Uh, if I put just one in it turns on straight away. Um, so I don't really know what richness is. But, uh, yeah, apparently, uh, yeah, I don't know what richness is. <laughs> I don't really know. It's not 100% richness. Is this 70% richness? Apparently this is 70% richness. I think it's how good the fuel is. Sorry if I'm not explaining this well, but I think the richness is, is how good the fuel is. So you really... Yellorium is going to be a certain amount, and later on there are other types of fuels with extreme reactors, where you have plutonium and uh, ludicrite and uh, all these other things, radiculite. There's different types of fuels, so I think the richness is how good the fuel is. Uh, we also have the fuel amount, and we have the amount of waste amount, so all of these are going to be your redstone outputs. Then what you want your reactor to do, we've already talked about on-off. We also have eject the waste, so you can actually take the waste out, and then you also have the amount of insertion that you have. Um, so you could say that if you have, um, say you don't want all of the insertions to be all the way to the top, so how about we turn this off very set, very quickly, and we'll export all of these. What we can say is uh, we would like 50% injection, on everything so all of these should be the exact same 50% injection now which it is so we can take these out there's a bit of fuel in here but that's okay we put these in and then we turn you on as you can see the burn rate is not nearly as much now it's going to be half the amount that you're actually having so that's your injection rate it's basically your burn rate so if I turn this up to 100 and change all your burn rate should now increase Okay, 100% means no injection. Let's change all of them to be zero. And there we go, we've got maximum injection. So 0% is your smallest amount of injection. Sorry, 0% is your maximum amount of injection. 100% is your least amount of injection. So you can say that basically you can change your burn rate with your insertion. For now, guys, that is going to be everything when it comes to your very first reactors inside of Extreme Reactors. It is very basic, don't get me wrong, but it's a very good early game way of generating power. Next time, we're going to be covering how you actually upgrade your reactors and maybe some other machines. But until then, 
this is going to be it. If this video helped you out in any way, shape or form, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me out and ring the bell button to stay notified when these videos go live. And if you haven't already, join the Discord, link down in the description. But until next time guys, take care.